never chase the hot thing, whatever it is. That's, that's like trying to catch the wave, and you'll never catch it. You need to position yourself and wait for the wave. And the way you do that is you pick something you're passionate about. Can you believe that I almost decided to name it Cadabra, as in Abracadabra, instead of Amazon? Hard to believe, right? It's crazy. I still can't believe Amazon is one of the largest companies in the world. We change the world. More so, I never thought I'd be the richest man in the world. This is my story. I was born in New Mexico, Albuquerque, on January 12, 1964. My mother, Jacqueline Gise Jorgensen, was still in high school when I was born. She was 17. My father, Ted Jorgensen, was a bike shop owner. My parents married, but their marriage hit a roadblock and couldn't last even a year. They got divorced. I was with my mother and we moved to Texas, where my mother met Mike Bezos, a Cuban migrant. They liked each other and got married, and I got the new surname, Bezos. Everything was changing around me, new father, new place, and everything was new. I attended River Oaks Elementary in Houston till sixth grade. Before I could adjust, we moved again, this time to Florida. We hoped to find better opportunities there. I had an interest in science and technology since childhood. As a young boy, I had been a garage inventor. I had invented an automatic gate closer out of cement-filled tires, a solar cooker out of an umbrella, though it didn't work very well, and an aluminum foil baking pan. I even rigged an electrical alarm to keep my younger siblings out of my room. In Florida, I attended Miami Palmetto High School. While I was in high school, I worked at McDonald's as a short order line cook during the breakfast shift. This was just to earn some extra money. I never let it get the better of me, as I kept my focus towards my goals in life and studies. I enrolled into the student science training program at the University of Florida. Despite getting less time to study, I became my high school's valedictorian, a National Merit Scholar, and a Silver Knight Award winner in 1982. In my graduation speech, I told the audience how I dreamed of the day when mankind would colonize space. In 1986, I graduated from Princeton University with a 4.2 GPA and a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. I was also a member of Phi Beta Kappa. While at Princeton, I was a member at the Quadrangle Club. In addition, I was elected to Tau Beta Pi and was a president of the Princeton Chapter of Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. After graduating from Princeton, I found work at several firms on Wall Street, including Fidel, Bankers Trust, and the investment firm D.E. Shaw. In 1990, I became the youngest vice president at D.E. Shaw. These jobs helped me gain valuable knowledge about the inner workings of Wall Street. I was making more money than I ever had in my entire life. Growing up poor, I've always had very little, but money to me was only a tool and never the end goal. I wanted to create something that had never been done before, something that was mine. I was the senior vice president for one of the world's largest investment management firms, but I still wasn't happy, content, or satisfied as it wasn't my own creation. I knew I had to decide if I wanted to continue this path or take a huge risk and follow my passion to do something extraordinary. I got the idea to start Amazon when I came across the fact that the web usage was growing at 2,300% a year. I had never seen or heard of anything that grew that fast. The idea of building an online bookstore with millions of titles something that simply couldn't exist in the physical world was very exciting to me. I just turned 30 years old and I had been married for a year. I told my wife Mackenzie that I wanted to quit my job and go do this crazy thing that probably wouldn't work since most startups don't and I wasn't sure what would happen after that. Mackenzie, also Princeton graduate, told me I should go for it. As I said, I always wanted to be an inventor and she wanted me to follow my passion. 
I was working at a financial firm with a bunch of very smart people, and I had a brilliant boss I much admired. I went to my boss and I told him I was going to start a company selling books on the internet. He told me on a long walk in Central Park, listen carefully to me, and finally said that sounds like a really good idea. But it would be an even better idea for someone who didn't already have a job. That logic made some sense to me, and it convinced me to think about it for 48 hours before making the final decision. It really was a difficult choice, but ultimately, I decided I had to give it a shot. I didn't think I would regret trying and failing, and I suspect I would always be haunted by a decision to not try at all. After much consideration, I took the less safe path to follow my passion, and I am proud of that choice. I wrote a business plan on a cross-country drive from New York to Seattle. After writing a business plan, I quit my job and began searching for investors for my company. I warned them that there was a 70% chance that my business could fail, because the idea of blending the internet and commerce had never been done before. They were just as ambitious as I was, and on July 5, 1994, I launched my business from my garage. At first, we only sold books, but I knew from the beginning we wanted to sell everything people wanted. It was always clear to me that the internet was going to revolutionize the way people live, and physical bookstores seem like one of the more obvious things that would change. To bring a little nostalgia from my childhood, I installed a bell to notify everyone we got an order. But after a few weeks, we had to turn it off because we received too many orders and the bell became annoying, just as we began to sell things beyond books. Well, things weren't all great after starting the company. The year 2000 was the toughest for me as the company hit rock bottom. A combination of fierce competition and the dot-com bubble burst led us to near bankruptcy. Online startups and companies were disappearing and closing all around us, with many including myself, were unsure if we could make it. We were fortunate enough to have borrowed and raised nearly $2 billion from a number of banks and investors weeks before the burst, and we were able to ride out this turmoil. During this time, we followed our main three principles. One, the customer is first. Two, stay innovative and remain inventive. And three, be patient. To us, inventive meant more than just e-commerce. It meant admitting that we weren't perfect and that we could solve our mistakes. We began as a humble online bookstore, turned it into an online e-commerce store where anyone could find anything from A to Z as the logo shows. It wasn't always called Amazon though. At first, I wanted to call it Kadabra or Relentless, but was talked out of both. I finally chose Amazon after the largest river in the world by volume. It also had the letter A, the first letter of the alphabet, and the Z, which resonated with the company's motto of selling almost anything and everything from A to Z. But as I promised in my graduation speech, I wanted to explore space, so I quietly founded Blue Origin, a human spaceflight startup company in 2000. By 2015, we had our first test flight into outer space and plan on having our first commercial flights into space in the near future. I want to live in a world where everyone can travel through the universe, just as they can now travel by airplane around the globe. This might seem futuristic and unrealistic, but a few years ago, your only option to purchase a book was to walk to a nearby store. So nothing is impossible. Of all the things I dreamt of becoming, the first centibillionaire on the Forbes Wealth Index was never one of them. My success was to work diligently towards my own personal goals. Tomorrow is a very real sense of your life. The life you author from scratch on your own begins with how you will use your gifts. What choices will you make? Or will you follow your passions? Will you follow dogma? Or will you be original? Will you choose a life of ease or a life of service and adventure? Will you wilt under criticism or will you follow your convictions? I will hazard a prediction. When you are 80 years old 
and in a quiet moment of reflection, narrating for only yourself the most personal versions of your life story. The telling that will be most compact and meaningful will be the series of choices you have made in the end. We are our choices. Work hard, have fun, and make history. My name is Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon.